Lord. Yeah. If you are happy and you shout and say, Amen. Yeah. I'm happy to be the house of the Lord myself this morning. Uh, if you see a car that the tires are smoking outside, you know that is my car because I was. On Friday, the pastor told me I was going to share something for 10 minutes. And I'm usually one of those people who get here at least 9.45. <laughs> so this morning, my wife is shaking me, get up, get up, get up. And I'm like, don't bother me. Why are you hurting me? You know you're supposed to say something in the church. I said, yeah, that's true. But you see, we've been going to uh, the night vigil. And you come to the night vigil, the pastor lay hand on you, you sleep so sweet, you don't even want to wake up. So I told my wife, you see, these days I'm sleeping so good, I don't know why. Before I used to wake up in the morning, walk around, and then again I go back to sleep. But these days, when I hit the bed, only God will wake me up in the morning. So I thank God, and I'm happy this morning. Uh, my reading today is from uh, Mark 35, uh, 41. I'm talking about faith, because the past has been talking to us that we need to have faith. And I have a little bit of experience with faith, because our lives have changed because we trusted and believed in God. When we first met, met our pastor here about two months ago, we had just come from Kenya, and I just want to testify just a few, for a few minutes where I'm reading with my story. When we met pastor, it wasn't something that we had planned. We had just arrived in the country uh, the day before, and then we went to go and pay our car insurance. And right at, at the door of where the lady we are paying for our insurance, right next to that door is the pastor's office. And he was coming out of his office, and I bumped into him, and I looked at him, and I said, Hey, my brother, I'm sorry, but uh, let me, we, we are going in, I didn't see you. And the pastor is like, it's okay. And then when he talked, I had this an African accent. I said, this man is a Nigerian. I've had Nigerian friends before. <laughs> Something in me told me to talk to this man. And I talked to him, and I said, my brother, it's nice to meet you. And on his right hand, was he was holding a Bible. And he's like, oh, where are you from? I said, I'm from Kenya. And this is my wife. We are going to pay each other. He said, you have two minutes. I said, oh, yeah, God's a good Two minutes. Yes, we have two minutes. So my wife, we opened the office. We went into his office. And my wife is like, she saw a sticker on the desk. As soon as my wife saw the sticker on his desk, he, he was so, she was so happy. And I looked at my wife, I was like, what's wrong with this woman? Why is she so happy in getting somebody's office? And she's smiling and she said, do you know this man? And the pastor is like, so you also know this man? And from there, the story became this, and our lives changed. Yeah. Right now, we are in Shelby, because the pastor took time for two minutes to pray for us, and our life has changed. Yeah. I used to say that. The next time I move from Charlotte, I'm getting on a plane straight to Kenya. <laughs> but now I got into a car and I went to Shelby. Yeah. So that is faith. Yeah. So this morning I'm reading from Mark 35. Yeah, Mark 35. Mark. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm reading about the story where Jesus Christ was in a ship with the disciples and he told the disciples, Mark what? 835. Okay, okay, okay. My wife was lying while I was speaking. And the cops were pulling everybody away from my road so that I can get to charge quickly. Mark 835. Is that right? Anyway, the story is that Jesus was in the boat. And when he was in the boat, 
the disciples, there was a storm. A storm came by. And he swept, you know, he started tumbling the boat. And the disciples are waking Jesus up and saying, Jesus, get up, don't you care about us? And Jesus said, he rose up and he, he stopped the wind. He told the wind, stop, be calm. And he turned around and told the disciples, why do you have little faith? Why are you of little faith? Because you are with me. And you don't trust that the storms of life, when they come, and you call on my name, everything will change. Amen. When the storms of life try to pin you down, go to Jesus Christ, and everything shall be all right with you. Yes. You should not have little faith when we've already been given the Bible, when we've already been given a church where the, the pastor himself is a man of God. He can look at your life. He can work, he can pray for you. He can guide you and change your destination. You need to have faith that you, when you walk through that door into this house, you are able, you work all week. You come here. They play music. This man is anointed. That man is anointed. That man is anointed. She's anointed. She is singing. We are worshiping. And here you are worshiping like you, you are carrying the whole weight of the world on your shoulders. When you come here, you're supposed to sing, dance. When I was young, before I knew the Lord, I used to go to a club. I would dance. I would dance until I'm drenching in sweat. When I come out of there, the next day when you wake me up, I can feel pain in, any, in all the muscles that I never knew that I had. But now you come to the church here, and what do you do? You sit down. The pastor says, get up. You get up and you're like, oh my gosh. Here we are standing up again. You sit down. It takes you forever. Have faith when you come in here. Know that all your problems are gone. Amen. By the time you walk out of here, you should walk out of here a changed person. Amen. You come here on Wednesday for the Bible study. I will share it on Wednesday. Wednesday morning, midday, I did an insult for the people that work under me. Immediately, my boss walked in. Everything that I've been talking to my people, he took me on the side and wiped everything. I was so, he put me so down, I felt so much pain. After I put the effort to work hard to make these people believe in what we do. And my boss comes in and says, what we just did is nothing. It is nothing. That paper doesn't mean nothing to me. I was so down. My, my wife is like, oh, today we are not going to the Bible study because we'll be going to the night vigil. Uh, we can't afford all that. I said, you better get your son because the only thing I need right now is to see the pastor and to see the child because I need my faith to be renewed. Yeah. And I got all that way and by the time I left here, I was a different pastor. In the Bible, we are told that there was, a, there was an officer, a Roman officer, who went to Jesus and said, Lord, I have a servant who is sick in my house. But you are not, I'm not worthy for you to come to my house. But if you say the word, my servant will be healed. Why? Because I have people who are under me. When I tell them go, they run. When I tell them come, they run to me. But if you say a word, my servant will be healed. And, the, and Jesus said, he'll be, he even told the crowd, I have never seen any, anybody of so much faith like this officer. Amen. So, trust and believe that when you come in here, when you come to Gilbert Christian Center, your life is changed. Amen. Before I came here, I've been always going to, I've gone to two Kenyan churches. I won't lie to you. Every time I walk in there, I try as much as possible that my life will be changed. But the time I come out of the church, I'm, I'm still the same. Amen. We've gone to a Baptist church. We've gone to a Lutheran church. And our lives, as we come back and they're like, no, that was not it. But we walk here one day. Amen. And I can assure you, our lives have been changed. Yeah. If you want your life to be changed, 
saved, if you want your family life to be changed, if you want your education, for those of you who, don't, who are pursuing education, if you want to pursue your education, I'm sorry if I'm going more than 10 minutes, but give me two more minutes and I'll be done. If you want your life situation to be changed, I'm a living testimony. Amen. My wife is a living testimony. Amen. And so many of you others that sometimes are scared to come and share your testimony. When you come in here, you have a burning testimony. Share it because you are only going to uplift others and let others see Jesus Christ in your life. My brothers and sisters, I'm happy this morning that I'm in church. Amen. I'm a Christian center. Are you? Amen. Thank you so much.